RCA Victor, world leader in radio, first in recorded music, and first in television, presents the Phil Harris Alice Faye Show. Enjoyment here is the Phil Harris Alice Fay Show, transcribed, written by Jack Douglas and Marvin Fisher, with Elliot Lewis, Walter Tetley, Janine Roos, and Whitfield, the orchestra under the direction of Skip Martin, and yours truly, Bill Foreman. What does vacation weather sound like? Now listen to the sound of the year-round indoor vacation weather you get with the new 1954 RCA Victor air conditioner. That's right. It's as quiet as a sleeping baby. And a baby needs this kind of quiet, cool, restful atmosphere for sleeping. So do you, for that matter, especially when nights are hot and muggy. RCA air conditioners have that extra quiet hush fan that pushes the air through the room in a fresh, cooling flow. And the operation of an RCA air conditioner is so easy, a child can lift the lid of the cleverly concealed climate tuner and a touch of her finger on the ingenious push-button controls chooses the kind of indoor weather she wants. Of course, the RCA air conditioner has a thermostat control, too, for constant, even comfort. So plan now, before the warm weather begins, to sleep better, work better, feel better with an RCA air conditioner in your home. the stars of the RCA Victor program, Alice Fay and Bill Harris. <laughs> the Phil Harris Orchestra, during its long and varied career, has played some unique engagements. But the place they're playing in this week probably tops all the others, at least in one respect. It is bigger than the Civic Auditorium and the Palladium combined. No, 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 fellas, no, fellas, no What's the matter with you guys? Sounds so thin, why can't you make it sound like something? Curly, it ain't all the orchestra's fault We'd sound a lot better if we had a regular bandstand with carpeting and silk drapes Like they have at Ciro's or the Mocambo There's nothing wrong with this place this is the biggest supermarket west of Knott's Berry Park. <laughs> well, you'd think for their big opening, they would have built a bandstand. Look, that's no excuse for the way you guys are playing. Will you please tell me why, all during that last number, the second trumpet player sounded so choked up and muffled? Because he's behind the dairy counter and he had to blow his way out of a bucket of cottage cheese. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, oh. I thought the piano player was a little young to have white sideburns. <laughs> All right, come on now. Let's start again. Now, wait a minute, Curly. Before we start, we better get the clarinet player a Mae West life jacket. What for? Well, he's sitting on the edge of the pickle barrel and he can't swim. <laughs> oh, don't be silly, will you? Let's cut out the joke. Now, let's go. One, two... About it, it won't be the first time he's been marinated. <laughs> now look, fellas, jobs ain't so easy to get, and this job ain't too bad. We're getting three dollars a man and all the broken cookies you can eat. <laughs> so we have to do a little work on the side to earn our money. And I'm doing more work than any of you. I'm leading the band with one hand and running the hamburger grinder with the other. <laughs> And it ain't easy I'm so confused I don't know if we're playing Chopped liver in paradise Or I'll be down to get you In a meatball, honey <laughs> Now, come on Let's try it through this time, will you? Let's go now One, two
Go. Excuse me. I beg your oh, pardon. Wait, oh, yeah, but... hold it. Hold it a minute, fellas. Hold it. Uh, just a second, please. Uh, yes, lady? I'm sorry to interrupt, but I have a request. Well, yes, ma'am. We're always glad to oblige. This is, this is the first request we've had. Uh, um, what is it you want, lady? A quart of milk. <laughs> <laughs> lady, we have all this musical talent here, and you want a, a quart of milk? That's right, and make it fresh. <laughs> you want the milk fresh? Yes, good and fresh. Okay, lady, you ask for it. And that's how you're going to get it. Okay, boys. Thank you, lady, and thank you, Elsie. <laughs> All right, fellas, now it's time to play a medley for the customers, so let's try and make it good, How huh? good can it be for $3 a man? That's just the point, Elliot. The way this band plays, $3 may be all we're worth. Hey, the bass player. Hey, bass player. Hey, Smaltz, Smaltz. Yeah? You was talking to me, Professor Harris? And I call you Professor only because I didn't save my money in the old country. <laughs> All right, let's not change the subject, huh, Smaltz? When we finish a number, why can't you cut out when we do? Why do you always play an extra note or two? To answer that question, you first got to understand the bass horn. You see, this is the mouthpiece, and this here is the horn. But in between the horn and the mouthpiece, there is as much brass pipe as there is in the main washroom of the Stadler Hotel. <laughs> And that pipe has more detours in it than the Hollywood freeway. <laughs> okay, okay, all right. So now we know that your bass horn has all that brass tubing. So what about it? Don't you understand, Dumkoff? When I blow in a note, I don't got any idea when it's going to come out. <laughs> in fact, if you knew anything at all about... You see? There's one from 10 o'clock this morning. <laughs> Now look, I'm going to level with you guys For the amount of time we put in rehearsing Compared with the way the music comes out Believe me it ain't good. What can you expect for $3 a man? Will you keep out of this? Just the one of my notes. <laughs> you pick a fighter with my friend or you got to fight me. Oh, now we've heard from Little Italy, huh? <laughs> Just butt right out of this, Paisano, huh? Oh, no, you don't. Not in my life, Ali. It's all right. If we only make $3, then you got to be the one to blame. Listen, Paisano... I want you to know that we do things differently here than you do in Italy. Now, they have one kind of music and we have another. And I want to ask you another question. All right, go ahead. Name me one, just one Italian who made good in American music. Mario Lanzetzio, Pinza, Julius La Rosa, Enrico Caruso, Rosa Pancella, Vicar Damone, Frankie Sinatra, Madame Tetrazzini. I'll go put a couple more nickels in the parking meter. Come back. <laughs> Barry Como, Dick Stabile, Groucho Maxini. <laughs> Bing across the belly. All right. <laughs> now, come on, fellas. We got to play a tune and we got to play it right, too. Now, let's consider that this job is an opportunity. Don't you understand if we make good in this market? Who knows? 
we might get a chance to play at the grand opening of that new mule cemetery in Tijuana. <laughs> now let's hit it, will you, fellas? I'm... All right, hold it a minute, hold it. Well, the food checker's gone. I better answer that phone myself. Hello? Oh, hello, Alice. What? You're kidding. She called just now? Well, golly, that's for tomorrow. Hey, I gotta hang up now. I gotta tell the boys. Hey, thanks for calling, honey. Bye. Hey, fellas, we just got the break that we've been waiting for. Did you ever hear of Miss Pamela Van Ridgeway? You mean that social leader broad? Uh... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's the one. <laughs> now, hold your hats, men. She just called the house and told Alice she needed an orchestra for her annual Bel Air indoor lawn party. That means we've got to play like, now brace yourselves, Lawrence Welk. <laughs> hey, wait a minute, Curly. We never heard that orchestra play. How are we going to know what Lawrence Welk sounds like? That's easy. Just get a Clyde McCoy record, boil it for two hours, and then play it with a shingle nail. <laughs> Now, if he don't sue me for that, he ain't half the Norwegian I think he is. <laughs> and listen, fellas, there's another thing about this Bel Air bash that you gotta know. Miss Van Ridgeway is a classical dancer. Now, she may decide to do a solo for the guests, so we have to learn to play the ballet from Sylvia. Have, um, any of you ever tackled the ballet? No, but I wouldn't mind tackling Sylvia. <laughs> That's pretty funny, huh, Curly? Pretty funny? No, no. <laughs> it wasn't funny. Well, throw a tadpole in my beer. <laughs> Now listen, fellas, you've all heard this music, and even if you don't know the name of it, I'll sing it for you. Now it goes like this. <laughs> I could have started that a little higher, couldn't I? <laughs> Now look, you all know it, fellas. Now come on, let's fake it. One, two. <laughs> Wait a minute. Who played that last note? That's me, bud. <laughs> look, Paisano, you're supposed to play it on your trumpet. Now what happened to your trumpet? Oh, I forgot it. Tell you yesterday I was to practice the music when a man from the finance company is come and take away my horn. Son, go to potato can get. I got so mad I fight like a wildcat. I scream. I holler. Well, that's where you made your mistake. Them collectors don't like any back talk. Maybe you gave him too much of your lip. No, just the one was stuck on the mouthpiece. <laughs> <laughs> There's something wrong here. Look, Elliot. You're the treasurer of the band. Now, you're supposed to make the payments on the instruments. What happened to the money in the treasury? Curly, get that embezzlement tone out of your voice. <laughs> I spent it on things that the band needed. For instance, I bought all that wallpaper. Wallpaper? What for? Well, you know how wallpaper makes a room look so much larger and cheerier and brighter? Yeah, yeah. Well, I papered the inside of the orchestra bus. <laughs> oh, well, that's different I thought you spent the money foolishly <laughs> Look, we're going to settle all of this later Now, let's get to work There's only 24 hours between us and our debut in Bel Air Oh, boy this will be something to tell the boys down at the Union, huh, Curly? Our band playing a job in Bel Air. Yeah, man, yeah. Hey, Elliot, do you realize that we are now riding through the most ultra, elite, fashionable, exclusive, and rich suburb in Southern California? I know it. 
Gee, what big estates. And look at those beautiful fields of cotton. That's not cotton. What is it? It's snow. <laughs> Louis B. Mayer gave his kid a pair of skis for Christmas. <laughs> Good thing he didn't give him a gondola. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, so I feel kind of out of place here in Bel Air, Curly. Yeah, I know what you mean, Elliot. For instance, look. Look at that sign on the corner. Look mm. what it says. You are now in the heart of Bel Air. No loud automobile horns, no noisy children, no yapping dogs, and loud breathers kindly use one nostril. <laughs> Here, aren't they? <laughs> Guess we better slow down. Uh oh, that's the Van Ridgeway house across the street. The one there, see it? With the lamppost. Man, what a lamppost. A live peasant with a light bulb in his mouth. <laughs> <laughs> well, look, I'm going to park the bus right here and then we'll take the stuff out. Yeah. Right. Uh, now, Eddie, you and Ralph help the drummer with this stuff and we'll get yes, this up. Hold it, everybody! Just stand where you are! Hey, Julius. Look, it's Julius, the grocery boy. Hi, Julius. Hi, Julius. In the daytime, I'm a grocery boy. But at night, I have another job, and I happen to be on official business. Me and these two guys I'm with are here to repossess their musical instruments. I got a court order. What? That's right. I'm helping out my cousin, Jacob Ruzio. Private eye, bail bond broker, criminals tracked down, bills collected, and maps to the movie star's home complete with flashlight and crowbar. <laughs> <laughs> Look, Julius, I don't care if you have got a court order. Now, can't you delay this until tomorrow? This Bel Air job is our big chance. You're ruining our career. Tut, tut, deadbeat. <laughs> now, let's see what's first on our repossession list. Oh, yeah, I'm supposed to confiscate one baton. Here it is. Wait a minute, just a second. That's my baton, and it's half paid for. Okay. Here's your half. <laughs> Wait a minute, this is the dull end. How am I going to wake up the brass section? You won't have no brass section. All right, men, take those trombones, the drums, and those two clarinets, and hand down that big box up no, there. No, just a second. Be careful with that box. <laughs> <laughs> Now you've done it, you've broken the arrangements. <laughs> Julius, how can you do this to us? Musicians have a pretty tough life at best. Mr. Harris, I know all that. I happen to have an uncle who's a musician. You do? How come I've never seen him? Well, we always keep him locked in his case. The poor fellow, he keeps dreaming that he's a harp player with a Philadelphia Symphony. <laughs> He dreams he's a harp player? Yeah. All night he keeps playing the Warsaw Concerto on his pajama strings. <laughs> I don't know if that's what he intended to say or not. <laughs> You want to leave it that way, or would you like to try for, uh... <laughs> you know, you can take what you got and quit now, you know. What do you suggest? <laughs> well, if it's going to come out anything like the last one, I'd quit. <laughs> but go ahead, take another flyer, kid. You're young, you can get away with it. <laughs> He keeps playing the Warsaw Concerto on his pajamas. Spring. You said that already. <laughs> but the psychiatrist finally cured him. How? He made him wear a nightshirt. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, I hope you're a big success at the party, Mr. Harris. Good night. How could Julius do a sneaky thing like this? Yeah. Here we stand out on the sidewalk without any instruments, and we're supposed to be in that house playing for this high-class party. Yeah. Now, what are we going to do? Well, let's go in anyway. You'll think of something. you got a good brain, Curly. Don't con me, Clyde. What are we going to do in there until we think of something? We may as well take advantage of the free eats and everything, so let's just <coughs> mingle with the guests and stall. <laughs> yeah. 
Mingle with the guests and stall. <laughs> oh, it's been so delightful chatting with you. You know, I pride myself on knowing everyone in the social register, but I must confess I can't place you, Mr... Uh, Mr... Oh, oh, uh, Stuyvesant. Uh, uh, Stuyvesant W. Stuyvesant. Yeah, that's it. Stuyvesant W. Stuyvesant. Oh, how remarkable. What does the W stand for? Nothing, but it breaks up the monotony. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, you really are amusing. Reminds me of the gay time I had in London with Winnie. He was so droll. I just love the English sense of humor. The English are so witty. I just love it. Oh, you do? Oh, yes. Then may I present... My friend? Oh, of course. And what is his name? I'm Sir Elliot Jaguar at your service, <laughs> madam. <laughs> Jaguar? Uh, uh, which Jaguar would that be? He's the one with the 20-gallon tank. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I say, that's a racer. <laughs> have a British accent, don't you? If I don't, I'm carrying a mouthful of tapioca for nothing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I can't remember ever meeting such droll personalities before, but I do believe that one of you is pulling my leg. Elliot. <laughs> <laughs> I said mingle with the guests, not tangle. <laughs> oh, well, you know, Mr. Stuyvesant, I must confess I'm laughing only to hide my concern for the success of my party. The musicians haven't arrived yet. Oh, well, I wouldn't worry about that, uh, Miss Van Ridgeway. I'm, I'm sure that they'll show up. Uh, I beg your pardon, ma'am, but I'm Thompson of the Bel Air Protective Association. I've checked on all of your guests, and uh, these persons you are talking to are nothing but unprincipled imposters. What can you expect for three dollars a man? Wait a minute! <laughs> now, look, don't be hasty, uh, uh, Miss Van Ridgeway, because, look, honestly, there's nothing wrong with, with our being here. You see, we're the musicians. If you're the musicians, where are your instruments? Oh, yes, the instruments. Well, well, you see, uh, the instruments, well, they... Uh, hey, Curly, got... Curly. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's it. You see, uh, uh, Miss Van Ridgeway, we knew that... You being a Bel Air social leader that you wouldn't want just any kind of, of an orchestra. So at great expense to ourselves, we imported a special instrument. They're the rage of all Europe. Oh, well, how different. What sort of instrument is it? Well, um, you've heard of Adolf Sax, the inventor of the saxophone, and Guanarius, the inventor of the violin, and of course... Stradivarius? Yes. Well, the instrument we use was perfected by a guy named Sam Kazoo. <laughs> well, well, as a hostess, I do appreciate being given the chance to present something new. And what may I tell my guests the title of your kazoo selection will be? Just tell them that it's the premiere of a composition called Concerto for Tissue Paper. <laughs>
And now, here are Alice and Phil. Phil, what are you doing with that steel screen? <clears throat> I'm pushing it in front of our RCA Victor television set. What for? Honey, baseball is here, and I'm going to watch the games with Elliot. And you know how he hates umpires. Yes. And you know how lifelike and real our television is. Last time, when Elliot saw an umpire over our RCA Victor set, he thought he really was at the ball game. He reached for an empty bottle and heaved it at the ump. Oh, Phil, you're exaggerating. I know our television picture is clear and lifelike, but really... Exaggerate? See this black eye? The umpire threw the bottle back. Oh. <laughs> well, maybe Phil was exaggerating, but not too much. A demonstration will convince you that if you can't get to the ballpark, the next best thing is RCA Victor Television. The wonderful new Master 21 model brings you clear, lifelike pictures, thanks to such famous RCA Victor advances as the Magic Monitor, Rotomatic Tuning, and Golden Throat Fidelity Sound. You can thrill to all this for as little as $199.95. Yes, for $199.95, RCA Victor gives you a season pass to the best in television baseball. And remember, a factory service contract for expert installation and maintenance is available in almost all TV areas, only to RCA Victor television owners. This is Phil again, ladies and gentlemen. May I tell you that your Easter Seal Society serves crippled children, and to receive its services, a child has only to be in need of any of the things that will help. Things that will help him to live a happier and more nearly normal life. So if you haven't contributed, mail your gift today to your local Easter Seal Society in care of your local postmaster. Thank you, and good night. Good night, everybody. in this program transcribed were Gloria Gordon, Mary Jane Croft, Alan Reed, and Bill Thompson. The part of Julius was played by Walter Tetley. Would you pick Sigmund Romberg's Song of Love as a campus favorite from coast to coast? Well, it is when played in the Ralph Flanagan manner. Ralph Flanagan's danceable arrangements are the current college rage, and 16 of them are now on RCA Victor Records. Hear Ralph Flanagan's four new college albums at your RCA Victor dealers now. This has been an NBC Radio Network presentation. Plan to hear Can You Top This, which follows John Cameron Swayze on the NBC radio network.